Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and our co-host in Hour 3 on Thursdays, popping in during the week with emergency stories historian, analyst, military analyst, Tim Alexander, often using his fancy title sometimes, Lord Sterling. <laughs> Uh, you've got a re, you've got a remarkable analysis of the historical and military issues, and that's why you're regularly on the program. You've there's a lot of really crazy things happening. I know it's relatively quiet right now, because we've been given the so-called, you know, the the snoozetainment. I, that's why I call the snooze is out there. We're the news. They're the snooze. Uh, that everything's fine. We can go to after Christmas. We'll have no problems. They almost had World War Three starting in in this Syria months ago. And then all of a sudden we couldn't afford... Well, you know, things even... sometimes seem, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Bill, uh, when you come out, out of a month that we literally were at the edge of the precipice of the Third World War and nuclear uh, and biological destruction of, of most of the population on Earth, that's all of us, uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, it, it you're, you're not quite there. Uh, you know, oh, wow, this is almost boring no it's not boring it's it's normal it's we have become accustomed to insanity yeah well let's go through some of the real key issues going on here uh well I, Angela I, I, Merkel, my, uh, yeah, yeah my is one of the key issues Right. I, my site, uh, I call it Europe because uh, I often uh, uh, look at uh, European events. And in Europe, uh, of course, we have our, our closest allies in the United Kingdom, in France, and in Germany. And we have embarrassed the, and angered uh, the living hell out of... Uh, leaders. Uh, now, uh, the German Chancellor Merkel, evidently her cell phone has been tapped uh, by NSA. Obama, of course, denies it. Um, the NSA monitor calls of 35 world leaders after government officials uh, handed a, the agency Rolodexes of numbers. And um, of course, many officials use uh, a variety of technologies to be able to communicate with one another without being listened to. Uh, you know, the old scrambled phone uh, frequency jumping, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But NSA has some of the largest computers on Earth, and if they're monitoring uh, a certain uh, landline or cellular line. Uh, they record it and they can run it through uh, their supercomputers, and it's a matter of how much supercomputer time do they want to to uh, to spend on breaking the code, breaking the system, and they can get in. Now you can imagine some uh, the the leader of Germany or the leader of France or, or the United Kingdom being very upset with the United States because we've been listening in on every conversation. Uh, it's more than a political thing. It's more than a military thing. It's a personal thing. And of course, when we talk uh, offline, we know that we're, we're, we're we may be listened to uh, for the simple reason that we're on the air, and when we criticize the government, we criticize Obama, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So our phones may be tapped. I don't like that. Uh, but that just goes with, uh, goes with, uh, I guess, exercising my rights as an American to to raise hell about the the trash well, I, uh, that's ruining America. I think the fact that the fact that they're monitoring us means they've got a pickup list. Well, yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, they, they they don't have, by the way, a cell with our names on them. They have a bullet with their engraved on it with a. Cell. Well, uh, you might be lucky if that happens, because you see, if you're a Christian. Uh, Death is not really death. Right. And, uh, but here, here's the issue. We, we have a situation where the government, we talked about this in the first hour with Professor McCanny, is planning all the signs of that they're planning a false flag. We have the demolition of the economy where Obama's trying to create debt faster than he can. I mean, he's got so many departments. We're going to have Tex Mars on next week discussing all the different departments where they're trying to literally spend us into oblivion faster than ever. And Obamacare is a good example. Now, they had a glitch with starting the software, but the fact is, even if the software works, let's say they recontract and get it going in three months, this is a road to hell. 
It will destroy the economy. It will destroy medicine. I, I agree and, with you, but let's and, focus and, and, just for a second on the fact that these idiots cannot even get a program up and running. You know, it's not the first time that somebody has set up hmm. a large uh, computer program but maybe, maybe and a that's system part of the plan, for though. people to respond to. Let's raise a question, though. One of the things I tell people always is we should ask better questions. One of the sideways that I call twisted questions is maybe they want it that way. How can you yeah. spend $640 million and get this kind of turkey for a system? <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, there, there are two sides to that, and, and one side is they are that stupid, and they are that messed up, and this is the well, government. But, but and maybe the other they're also side getting is, you know, yeah. they're really, they're not quite that stupid. They're really that twisted. <laughs> okay, here, here's what they want to do. They want to destroy the health care system. Tex Mar said on the Rents Network last week, he's got proof that they actually, Obama plans on bringing half a million doctors and nurses into this country from foreign countries like Afghanistan and Kenya. Now, the day, oh, doctors are retiring gee, like crazy. that's the kind of doctor I want. Right, and what, what Obama wants to do is he wants to bring in foreign doctors that will follow orders. He wants to destroy the system enough and wreck it enough that a lot of the, quote, health providers are, are driven into bankruptcy or gone. So it's my feeling they wanted this to crash. This is part of the shakedown. This is part of the shakedown. They, if they hired any reasonably competent company at about a million dollars, they should have had a, a it's a form fill out program. I know how to write, write code. And I can tell you, this was stupid. I helped to design all of our databases for neutral medical clay and iron, and they're written in Java and Java beans. These idiots getting a quarter, three quarters of a, almost of a billion dollars to write a turkey like this, this was on purpose. It's not an accident. They could have been testing this before. This is on purpose because they want to drive doctors out of the system. They want to drive a hospitals bankrupt. They want to bring in, after they've got a, a total control system in two or three years, there will be no private insurance left. They will be driven out of the marketplace, and they'll be bankrupt or gone. And this is the goal. Obama, well, you know, as he said, on, on it's a fundamental hand, change. Say- on one hand, yeah. Dr. Bill, I'm so disgusted with the American medical system as it is now. Uh, and it's like everything else in the world. Well, it's upside it, it, down. But it's but bad. It's like do you trust score, them okay. to fix it? Do you trust no, them to but, fix it? No, but no, they're not going to fix it. Let me explain. The medical doctors and hospitals are all captured in this system. Remember now, the government set up DHS, and they set up to give the American Murder Association, the AMA, the right to make the medical codes for all the insurance companies and the government and Medicare and Medicaid. That means they don't need members of the American Murder Association, the AMA. They simply have to sell code books and overlook the codes, and they make enough money from the government insurance carriers to control all the doctors' behavior. Now the new doctors, whether they're from Kenya or Afghanistan or Iraq, they're going to follow orders because they're going to do exactly what DHS sells, even if it'll kill the patient. And your regular doctor is going to get retired, and they're going to say, "I'm not. I can't do this. I can't kill people the last three or four years of my career before I leave medicine." So you're going to see a situation happen here where I really believe that Obama and the powers behind him wanted this to crash. All the evidence points that they literally f- wanted this to crash. They wanted to kind of say they're going to fix it. They've already had experts come out and say there's no way in six weeks, which is the new delay they have, that they're going to fix this. It is unfixable. Well, it's unfixable. I'm, I, I'm, I'm like many people. Uh, my university gives us uh, a group policy. We've been in, told that it ends uh, in December, the end of December. And right. where do we go? What do we do? I don't know. Uh, I know. Well, what's going to happen to all the people? that think they've signed up and don't have insurance or their their insurance is canceled now and now they're scrambling with a system that's supposedly delayed and i've watched fox news and elsewhere to talk to the uh, listen to the experts talking about this it is not possible to fix this system in six weeks they need six months of real experts and start all over again and secondly they had never controlled the cost before they put the system in which means even if it worked for, for enrolling everybody, it'll bankrupt the country. If they had a seawall or the generators higher up, maybe a mile or two in. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. 
So, Jim, when we look at some of these events, we see uh, there, I, I saw the face of Angela Merkel on Drudge, and I, I was just disturbed by look, her. Her sad. It's like a. It's like a, a really close friend of a high school sweetheart who's just been jilted. <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, and she had this look on her face, like, "What do you do to me?" It's embarrassing what you did. You, and she's holding up her cell phone with the German symbols on it. I'm thinking. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. And the, the, by the way, the, the French are not just taking this lying down. People really underestimate the French. You tick off the French, man, they're just like ticking off the Syrians or Russians. Yeah. They go crazy. And, and yeah, well, you, you have to remember, they're, 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 you know, before the Brits were uh, built their, their giant empire, it was France was the, 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 the superpower in Europe and the world. And, uh, you know, Louis the Fourteenth and Sixteenth, and he, then he, Napoleon. He and, oh, and, you know, that... He basically they, they, bankrupt the country with his personal entertainment and so on, but it was French misspending of money that caused the French Empire to fall. It didn't fall from the outside, it fell from the inside. Gee, does that sound familiar? Yeah, well, that's, that's what's happened to America. America is in a death spiral, and we can stop it if we do three things. Number one, we repent. And repent is soap with the water of action and, uh, and, and humility. Number two, we need to repatriate our money, so it means we need to get rid of the Federal Reserve and repatriate Absolutely. money to America. Number three, we need to write off these banks, and the too big to jail banks need to go to jail. And we, that means Glass-Steagall, it means we don't need to have what I call secession. This idea of secession means the little pieces of America, like Texas seceding, makes it easier for the globalists to digest the little pieces of what Absolutely. America was. Absolutely. I don't agree with this. This, this stupid idea of, re, of secession is like, uh, you morons need to stop talking about this. What you need to talk about is Glass-Steagall repatriating our money, writing off the debt, having what I say a rational health care system. Fed. And, and by kill the way, it. both parties are it. it's, it's black heart. Well, these guys need to go. Look, for example, Jamie, J, uh, J.P. Morgan, Jamie Diamond got a $13 billion penalty for a trillion dollars debt and destroying hundreds of thousands of Americans. Millions of Americans lost their homes during this crisis in 2008 that they created. Businesses went bankrupt. So he, he got slapped. What was that uh, $13 billion that, that comes out to? That's walk, walking around change. fine, you know, yeah. for a trillion dollars. That's not bad. Yeah, Would you yeah, pay $13 it, billion if they gave you a trillion dollars? No, that's, what, that's the, actually the thing is that no, behavior is not going. That's that one point three percent, isn't it? Yeah, they're, they're, they're still not. They're still signing, telling securitized mortgages, which means they haven't dealt with the underlying problems. Like saying, "Well, we don't really want to amputate the whole foot because you got gangrene. <laughs> We're just going to take off your baby toe." But the rest of it's black, green, fungating, and smells like hell. And it's already tracking up your leg. We're going to leave the foot on until we have to take your leg off. Yeah, well, we may have to go right up to the neck, but yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later, right? Uh, well, the, tur the ne neck of the turkey is Obama. I mean, this guy, <laughs> and, and it's not just him, it's all the people behind him. We call him, you know, the puppeteer. I call him Soros, uh, you know, Geppetto. He, he literally is a puppet. He He's the, uh, 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 what's the thing they read, the... Uh, uh, reader in teleprompter reader in chief, and you know, uh, uh, again with Obama, he's the first president. You have to say, who was his mother? Who was his father? Where was he born? What citizenship does he hold? What? Who were his grandparents? Uh, where was he uh, educated? Where did he do really do his uh, undergraduate work? And did he really graduate from law school? I mean, he was he was listed, but hardly nobody knows him. Uh, how come every not one, not two, not a half dozen, but every single photo of that man as a toddler, as a uh, as a young kid, as a um, older kid, as a teenager, and as a college student, every single photo shows absolute evidence of being photoshopped. Now, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, you know, we have millions of listeners, and I would be willing to bet you dollars to donuts, not a single one of our listeners can say that about themselves. But yet, that's true of Obama. Yeah. Well, yeah, are you familiar right? with Judge Roy Moore? Judge Roy Moore? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, Judge Roy is uh, probably one of the toughest, most Christian judges in America. And he got elected as a judge in Alabama. And Obama's qualifications as a citizenship and an ability to write and sign any bills during his first two terms in office are hanging in the balance. 
they're not going to stop the tsunami. And when it happens in the new year, you're going to see the revelations of Obama's lack of citizenship, lack of right to be who he says he is. He's the, I call the imposter in chief. We have a situation where we have a number of things. Obamacare, everybody knows, even the, the stupid Democrats, the evil Democrats, they know this is a turkey. The entire plan, not only can you not implement it, if you do, the Democrats will have committed the Japanese ceremony of harikari, which means suicide. So once this thing starts to unfold, any Democrats that think they're going to get elected to the Senate and Congress next year, forget it. Okay? All the Republicans have to do is just sit back, hold their hand over their mouth and snicker while the Democrats push this forward. All the Republicans have to do is just not to bring a bill forward to, to, to nullify the sequester. All they have to do is introduce bills to bring in the Glass-Steagall Act and pass it through Congress. Is Obama not going to sign it? Because with these financial tsunamis come on, if the Senate and Obama don't do it, the blood will be on their hands and the Democrats will not only lose the Senate, they will lose the presidency in 2016 and for a long time after. Well, they, the, they, Republican, they, the, the Republicans, though, have people like Bonner, who I think should be surgically removed as a Speaker of the House. This guy is a, is a wimpy, crying turncoat. Because the fact that he even brought this bill before, they should have, number one, not tried to shut the government down. They should have put in, put in piecemeal legislation to tear it apart piece by piece. Not try to, to disallow the entire bill, but to tear it apart, to delay it, to do whatever, rather than trying to say, well, we're just going to shut government down and we're just not going to go to work. You so know, that, uh, that's Dr. not a good bill, attack. And the only one to give a good tactic in the on that was Jim Bush. You had an absolute monster, Adolf Hitler. He was one fourth Rothschild, uh, and the, the the bankers put him in power. But he took a country that was in worse shape than the United States, but had great great resources, great everything, and he turned Germany around in about two to three years. Now, if an idiot like Hitler could do it, I guarantee you the American people could turn their country back around because I, I we are you, sitting on the best real estate. The best people, the best everything on earth. Okay, but, here, here's the steps. Number one, do what I mentioned already with Glass-Steagall and repatriating our money. Number two, make us the number one oil producer on earth. Number three, set up tariffs against third world countries and stop investing our pension of funds, our state and cities in foreign countries first. It's going to be investment first in America. Number four, if we're going to help a country, we're going to help because we're going to help train their people to go back to their country, not come here and take over. What we're doing now is we, we are destroying our young people who can't get an education and get giant debts. We're not integrating business and manufacturing with the need for people to have technical skills so they take free fresh air courses only. It's important to have his background in history and the other things, but it's important to have technical background so you can actually the get a Chinese job. Chinese have more people studying engineering and science than all the engineers in science in history right now. So what I we're see toast happening... if we don't wake up. Well, I think we're going to wake up. Obama has been, I thank God, every morning for my family, and right after that, Obama. I think Obama <laughs> is the best gift we have had from the Most High God, because he's making it crystal clear that he's a symptom of our foolishness. And we're joined uh, with our regular guest, Chris Harris, who doesn't have an update report, but he is always ready to answer questions. We have Tim tracked it down that these two giant typhoons are actually converging off of Fukushima this Saturday, which is a couple of days away. We know that the last typhoon that struck was a massive increase in radiation here in California. It went up five times background from two times background. And by the way, we were spared in places like Amarillo, Texas, Idaho, Colorado, Levels were like 10, 20 times background. Uh, people think that you're spared, oh, you poor West Coasters. No, no, it's that 25, 26,000 feet. If you're flying at those altitudes, you're, you're in big trouble. And the problem is when asked three questions. Number one, we, uh, there, we now have this, some, these typhoons coming. We know that you can dig down four inches and hit radioactive water. The, literally, the, the, the screws and rivets that hold these tanks, which are falling apart, are squirting radioactive, highly radioactive water on workers who are not even using those dissimilarity cards because they've been sent in by the Yakuza, the Japanese version of the mob, to die, to actually work there until they die. 
They have no morale. People are already shaking on this on the site of the reactors. This is a. It, I mean, if this was a movie set for The Walking Dead, people would say, no, no, this is too realistic. We can't put that on the air. Uh, Chris, there's three things that I want to ask. The first is, people need to get personal protection. We have the radiation kits, neutral and neutriodine, neutral defense, NIOSH masks. They need to realize that they better enjoy the coastal waters if they're living in the West Coast or in their lakes inland. They better enjoy the fact that the fresh air and water, because when there's radiation alert, you need to use hazmat certification certificates, activities like a HEPA filters in your in your home. Seal off your windows. Wear your NIOSH mask. Take your radiation protectants, and realize you ain't going outside because the radiation level until that cloud passes is very very dangerous. They need to realize that it's not going to be safe to eat food or drink water unless it's filtered because you're going to bioaccumulate these things. Do we have anybody that really understands that the Japanese now decided to start pulling the fuel rod assembly bundles that will start a pyrophoric fire, that all we need is a big typhoon or an earthquake, and we're going to get a massive burst of radiation, and if the place ever goes on fire, you're going to start seeing acute radiation sickness in the entire northern hemisphere, and believe me or not, it's going to get to the southern hemisphere too. People don't understand. We are literally on the precipice of a global catastrophe of biblical proportions. So the first question is, how soon are they going to pull these fuel rod assemblies? How big will the tsunami affect the stability of the whole mushy place? And number three, are there any plans, I know since last year, to evacuate these people. Yesterday I did a consult for a lady, American, who was three weeks in Tokyo, on the coast and in one little town south of Tokyo City, to Tokyo, the giant city, and she came back with her hair falling out and was freaked out by radiation sickness. Well, you know that they're trying to step up and move up the schedule for removing fuel from Unit 4, Fukushima Unit 4, and fuel pool. Uh, early so, so, in other words, the schedule wasn't good for Fukushima getting. They want to move it up because, like, you know, hell has been stoked and it's hot enough for these people's souls after we burn their bodies with radiation. So we got to move up the schedule for the Fukushima Zilla monster to chew up all the Japanese people in their DNA and to fry America while we have the, the literally, the violin player Obama fiddling while Rome and America burns. What I can't uh, determine is which fuel assemblies they're going after first. I suspect it's going to be the 210 assemblies that are unused fuel that they were going to refuel Unit 4 with so that while they're not highly radioactive, they have, remember, they've never been used in fission, so there's like almost like a full tank of reactivity. I guess that's, that's the analogy. They're a full tank. So while they're not highly radioactive, there's a potential for criticality accidents. So I'm not sure how they were going to do it. I'm trying to find that out. What do, I suspect they're going to go after those first since they're low radioactive, but they're still also dangerous in that if they can't keep the, uh, keep the uh, reaction from going critical in, in those assemblies while they're dangling in either midair or, or yeah, well, in, uh, so that would be really bad. So that, I mean, there's a, you know, or if they're going to go after some of these spent fuel, well, there's also the uh, radi- radiation hazard. So, and, and of course, the, uh, So how the, soon could that happen? Is that something in the next few days or weeks? When is it it's supposed to happen? Well, as I said, I'm trying to find out which ones they're going to go after. I, do, I suspect they're probably going to pull the uh, unused... Before fuel. Thanksgiving, after... Is it going oh, to be the, you know, are we going to send, <laughs> well, we'll maybe we should send Obama over as Jack Skellington to take the Oogie Boogie Man to the TEPCO and steal the fuel rod assembly bundles. Maybe we can do that. Well, before, let, let's go see how it goes. I mean, I, I don't, I, there's not really not much else. Obviously, they're under some duress and they're under some uh, interest to move how about, well, uh, how about global genocide? And this is something people need to understand. Have you ever heard the word terraform? The world is being terraformed by globalists and transdimensional, what called transdimensional entities that are avataring our global leaders, not just because they're greedy or want power, they want mega deaths. 
And when we see that, plus we see the deficiency in health care that's going to be further degraded during the time when it's most needed, especially for the elderly, the weak, the unborn, people with insurance, this is the worst possible time to put in a health care system that's flying apart. It's crazy. Uh, uh, gentlemen, we have, uh, and they will coincide, uh, to go together this Saturday. There are two big typhoons, um, Francisco and Likima, and they're apt to come together right around Fukushima uh, this Saturday. So two typhoons, not how, one. How do, you, how do you say weather modification? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would like to know if HARP was involved well, yeah. in, in, in Well, I that. talked to Professor McCanny, and he said there's a number of different parameters, including the P waves and other things, that indicated that the uh, upthrust off of the Fukushima Daiichi that occurred about 75 to 125 miles away was not a normal tectonic event. Although there's lots of earthquakes there, and they are occurring regularly, it's his opinion, again, he's the expert, that this was an artificially created tsunami. Which was yeah, yeah. By, there, he's he not says, the only one. He's not the only he's one. He's actually said, said this that, that it, it lacks certain data that is normally present in all upthrust tsunamis in the ocean floor, and this data indicates that it was a nuclear event, like a nuclear bomb or a chain of them, down along the fault line area of the upthrust zone. That this did not have characteristics indicating it was a. You know what? What phenomenon. I don't understand is when mm -hmm. I look at at what is happening to Japan. Uh, just to Japan, and I try to look at things from the perspective of the 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 people involved, from their perspective, from their interest. And I don't understand why the Japanese are taking this and why they've allowed. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell you why, because they have a culture that tolerates this kind of uh, shogun attitude. And they're journalists if they speak out. For example, the E&E &E News has picked up this program and this show with Chris talking about it and you talking about it myself. Three times, I think it is, isn't it, Chris? Three times now or two times? How many times is it? They picked it up and they've transcribed it and put it in the E&E &E News out of Japan because their own journalists, if they say these things that we say or ask these questions, they go to jail. Yeah. They're not pass go. They go to jail. They actually arrest them and put but, them in jail so they but, terrorize but my point their journalists. Is the Japanese people are going to be destroyed by this nonsense. Well, I mean, uh, it's me, genocide let, let the, to their people. Let, let me give you the dialogue yesterday, and I'm going to say this. I won't mention the name of the lady. When I talked to her, she was very freaked out. There were hairs falling out. I asked her, are you having bleeding gums? Are you having any other sores in your body? No. I said, good, okay, you just got hair loss. I said, and you're only there three weeks. She was in Tokyo, a place south of Tokyo, and she was right on the coast which is, you know, right parallel, so she's, coastal areas are particularly dangerous because you're going to get the double whammy of not only the airborne, but the coastal, what's called the re-atomized upper layer, right on the top of the water, the buckyballs carrying the high isotopes. She said to me, but we still have work there. I said, you understand they need to start evacuating Tokyo now. Yeah. Now. If they don't start evacuating, Largest how, city is it, on Earth. how are they going to get them off that island? with a massive burst of radiation, whether it's this tsunami, uh, tsunami or it's going to be a, a, a convergence of these great typhoons or a pyrophoric fire. What are they going to do? Welcome back. I just want to read some of the news reports. And one of the best places to go is rents.com. He follows this very closely, and uh, he has Michael Collins on uh, as well, Enviro Reporter, also Yoichi Shimatsu, who uh, travels around all through the area from, from Korea right through to Japan, has to periodically go back and detox. The latest news report here is that these are converging, and there's a high threat of landslides and flash floods. I predict that we're going to have, this is the, without setting dates, we're going to have a surge of radiation, a massive burp after this next week. Within three to four days after this typhoon will strike the west coast of the United States and go through the jet stream and strike high altitude areas in America and in Europe and elsewhere. Number two, we haven't averted the financial disaster. We're going to find out that not only is, are we having a problem with famine because of climate shift, we're heading into an ice age, we're also going to have radioactive food which will be unhealthy for people to eat and that will amplify the famine dr dramatically by next year. The third thing I expect to happen is that we're not going to have a solution to the, the problems. The Republicans cannot back down in January when this comes back, and we're going to end up with a financial Donnybrook again, 
And it won't be a government shutdown. It'll be a downgrading of American credit, and you're going to see a bond market run. And the first step of it will be to raise interest rates. The government doesn't have to do anything. All they need to do is have enough instability to drive the interest rates up a couple percent, and the cost of overnight banking and inter- interbank banking and taking out loans, if the mortgage rates rise, if the or cost of borrowing money rises even a few percent, the economy is going to fly apart. Now, I predict all this is going to happen in a sequence, which is all by design, by the way, so that we have a, a blow-note economy, a devalued dollar, a new world system that forces Russia and China to cooperate with the world system, the no global world system. They want these catastrophes to not only make people sick, but also to kill them, because a lot of the, the elderly, the weak, the, uh, the young and the unborn, they're going to die. They're going to die, and they're going to die very fast after this next radiation surge. And if they pull these fuel rod assembly bundles and they go on fire, we're going to have a pyrophoric fire that's going to be something right out of the Bible. It's going to be, oh, my gosh. Uh, the level of radiation will be, you know, like the book of, you know, dealing with this time, you know, chronicling it, you know, like this is the New Testament, like the, the how can I say, the, let's talk about the end of days testament. You know, this is the end of human history, secular history. Yes, and after Fukushima spoiled, despoiled one third of the oceans of the earth, a great set of typhoons struck the northern island of Japan, and all the fish in the seas died. Four thousand nautical miles. The oceans are dead east of Japan. Four thousand nautical miles. It's a dead zone. People don't the, understand. The the Book of Revelation speaks of um, a a plague that takes a third of the population, that's bio-war. And it speaks of wormwood, which takes a third of the population. Now, we didn't know what wormwood meant. I mean, it's it's a, a plant, uh, and uh, well, for 2,000 Russian, years... Russian term for it is Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Yes, exactly. And and now we know Chernobyl, we, we know it means either radiation poisoning or nuclear war which, of course, is radiation poison. Well, the, 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 the amount of radiation there, sitting in these two, three reactors that are melted down, and the cooling pool in reactor four is equivalent to the entire radiation and more of a full-force thermonuclear exchange with all the countries on Earth. That's how bad this is. And we haven't seen the worst of this at all. In fact, I tell people, if you're not ready to have raincoats and leave them outside and do hazmat, if you don't have HEPA filters, if you're not prepared to hunker down in your home because you're not going to go up to get food or water, because they're eventually, even the radioactive water supplies will be radioactive. If you're not filtering your water, you're going to drink this stuff. If you don't realize you don't take your radiation detector when you're buying produce or fish, you're going to be eating this stuff. And when all of a sudden you get violently ill because you got an acute radiation sickness, and I'm going to go over specifically some of the symptoms. You're going to get problems with disorientation, nausea, wasting, sores in your mouth and gut, GI tract problems, hemorrhaging, uh, headaches, disorientation, insomnia, agitation. People don't understand what's going to happen. Imagine an entire population with a large percentage of the population showing signs of acute radiation sickness. Can you add to that, uh, you know, Chris? Because I think people understand. No. We're going to see, and I'm saying in the next six months, a very high probability of a percentage of the population, the doctors won't even recognize it, but of people with acute, mild to severe radiation sickness if there's a major release of radiation. Well, I think the people in Japan are already experiencing... They're already getting it, and their their, their network is almost making a joke out of it, like, oh, you must eat Fukushima food, and they even have fast food places saying we're going to grow our food there and bring it to our restaurants all over Japan from Fukushima. It's like these people are making a suicide a joke. Yeah, well, it's not a joke when your kids die. Well, you know, these people have a very twisted idea of being nationalistic. Oh, you must be nationalistic. You must eat Fukushima and show your strength with the rest of Japan. It's like, yeah, but, what? you know, what concerns me is is uh, they were a pretty tough enemy in World War II, and if they wake up to the fact that somebody has done this to them, uh, there may, may be hell to pay. Uh, Chris, you uh, on the break, you, you, you spoke I, I, of... I, I, personally, I personally think that the Western diet, the Western media, the dumbed-down population, which is everywhere, including Japan, are not going to react like dumb sheep until the wolves have literally brought them right over 
the cliff so then they can take their dead bodies and sit them up on a roaster. Our population here in America is somewhat more, you know, doesn't have that cultural background. But a large percentage of the population think no matter what Obama's doing, even if he's roasting your kids in an open fire, he's great, man. He's great. (laughs) Yeah, that's... There's it's a sick. It's very sick. It's, it's a, a certain it's a vid- percentage of the population are total idiots. Well, it's beyond idiots. It's evil. There's no. You, you can't just say they're stupid because stupid would be a nice out. They're not stupid. They're evil. You can't describe good as evil and evil good. You can't say Obama is just stupid or incompetent or the people that support him. These people are evil. Let's call it what it is. They're, they're, they're aware he's a monster. They're aware he's putting together something that even the Democrats are saying won't work. And they're all freaked out because they know once this rolls out in the next few months, by May or June, the Democrats are done. If the Republicans don't drop the ball, which they do regularly with idiots like like Bonner, Bonner needs to be gone. He is a moron. Well, He's you know, okay, guys, height. this this could all roll out mm-hmm. kind of simultaneously, increasing problems from Fukushima and uh, this An Obama plague. Obamagate, Obama, Obama uh, care, he, this mess. But remember now, he's just itching for it because he wants this Obamacare to be a mess. He wants an airborne plague. The Americans have already talked about evacuating Japanese, but they're not doing anything to even warn us about the radioactive fish we're eating. You can go into a thousand restaurants in Southern California and get sushi, much of it from the Pacific Ocean, almost certainly all radioactive, cesium-134, 137, plutonium-239, radioiodine-131, and more, all beta emitters, all radioactive as hell, and people will say, it's fine? No, it's not fine. It's not fine that the government's doing it. It's literally a genocide against the population. And what I see when I even talk to our elected officials, they don't want to talk to Deagle. They don't even want to answer my questions. They don't want to meet face-to-face. They don't yeah, want in anything. Canada and the United States, they have reduced the surveillance, the official governmental surveillance they, they, of uh, they've fish changed the numbers and, and so forth. Yeah, they reduce the numbers so you can have, hey, 20,000, 50,000 times the previous normal safe dosage. We're going to make it 50,000 times more. What do you think of that? What do you think of that, hmm. Deagle? And, what do you think of that, Alexander and Harris? What do you think? Hey, how about we're going to hey, make... Hey, your food will sudden, blow in the dark. A, you won't need with lights. A stroke, with a stroke of the pen, you can have... Yeah, and by the way, they've, they've got it so high now that the chances of a farmer dying from radioactive plutonium-239 to contamination of their soil now, it has to be reported, will increase the chances of dying from radioactive-induced cancer 800%. So, Remember when we so, had the, the retired Army uh, medical expert on nuclear warfare on the show? This was months ago. And I said to him, any amount of plutonium ingested in the body will kill you. He said, that is absolutely correct. Even one atom, one right. submicroscopic atom of plutonium ingested in the human body will kill you because it will sit in you and it will irradiate and irradiate and irradiate. Man. Yeah, I tell people, get our first line of defense, get, get yourself prepped up, be ready for a bank holiday, D- you know, enjoy the holidays coming up, realizing that they have solved nothing, that an airborne plague is coming, the tsunami is, is going to hit Fukushima, we're going to get blasted in the next few days, probably by next week with the next big burp of radiation. And don't be smug saying, oh, you poor people on the West Coast. No, you in Vermont, you in the Rocky Mountains, you in the East Coast could get hit way harder than us because it's projected high in the atmosphere, 20, 30,000 feet, and it may come down in rain or when the jet stream dives. You can't predict it unless they're, because they're not monitoring it at all. But it's up there. Yeah, Hour two, I'm on Reds tonight. We'll talk about this and many other topics. Take care, everybody, and take action. 